All right, next up is the short run of polynomial functions. And you want to start with your rational function. And let's start with something like uh, x squared plus 4x plus 3 over x squared minus 4. Uh, the first thing you want to do, these things are a lot easier to work with when they're in factored form. So you want to factor both the top and the bottom. So let's go ahead and factor the top. The top I'm looking for two numbers. You multiply together to give us 3 and add together to give us 4. And that of course is x plus 3 and x plus 1. And the bottom, when you factor out the bottom, you're going to get an x minus 2 times an x plus 2. That's that difference of squares form there. Uh, and so what we want to do is we want to look at, in particular, the the you know, zeros are very interesting sorts of things. That's what we want to look for. Um, and actually the y-intercept, the y-intercept is a little bit easier to look at uh, in the original form when it's all multiplied together. But you want to put, plug in a zero for x and see what y is. If you plug in zero for x uh, into the equation, that's going to be r of zero. Uh, we're going to just get zero squared See, everything on the top is going to be 0 except for the 3 at the very end. Uh, and on the bottom, uh, if you plug in 0, you're just going to get the negative 4 up there. So our y-intercept would be 0, negative 3 fourths. And that's a little bit harder to see in this factored form, but it's there as well. Still, if you put in 0 for x, you'll have a 3 times a 1 on the top. And on the bottom, you'll have a 2 times negative 2. Actually, I have those in the other, wrong order. You'll have negative 2 times 2 if you plug in 0. So it's still the same thing. It's a negative 3 fourths for your, for your y-intercept there. All right, so y-intercept is pretty straightforward. Uh, the other sort of creatures that come up when it's with the short-term behavior are the vertical asymptotes and the horizontal asymptotes. Uh, or not, the, not the horizontal. Horizontal is the long run behavior. The vertical asymptotes and the x-intercepts. Uh, if you remember when we talked about fractions a while ago, um, we had that nice little thing uh, that it's okay to have a zero on top of a fraction. Uh, and in fact, if you have zero divided by a number, that comes out to be zero. And that's what we're looking for uh, in this for the y -inter or for the x-intercepts. Uh, I want to want to set uh, r of x equal to zero. I want to set the overall thing, the overall fraction, equal to zero. So I'm looking at x plus three times an x plus one over x minus two times an x plus two. Uh, I want to get zero out of that fraction, and that's going to happen whenever the top of that denominator, the top of that fraction, is going to be zero, and so. Uh, x plus 3 uh, is going to equal 0, or x plus 1 is equal to 0. So I get x equals negative 3, or x equals negative 1 are going to be my two x-intercepts. Or if we want to be a little bit more formal about it, uh, we should write them in point form. Uh, negative 3, 0, and negative 1, 0 are going to be the x-intercepts of that formula. Uh, and so, the, but then the other thing comes happen. Well, what happens uh, when the bottom is zero? Uh, it turns out again that you're not allowed to divide by zero. But what happens when you're dividing by zero is you end up with vertical asymptotes. So uh, where this denominator will be zero, we end up with vertical asymptotes. We're going to have vertical asymptotes. at uh, x equals 2 or x equals negative 2. We're going to have some vertical asymptotes for this graph. Um, so if we go back here a little bit and remember the long run behavior, uh, was that we look at the leading degree. Uh, we were looking at uh, x squared over x squared. In the long run, that's, that's what was, I was going to have was an x squared over x squared uh, from the x squared plus 4x plus 3. 
the x squared on top is the most important thing. Uh, the, the x squared on the bottom and the x squared minus 4. The x squared is going to be the most important part of that as well. Uh, and so essentially we're going to get 1. So in the long run behavior, the y coordinate of this graph will be 1. And so that's a lot of really useful information that we have there that we can, we can make a really detailed graph of what this uh, uh, rational function looks like. Uh, we know that you're going to cross the x-axis here at negative three quarters, or across the y-axis, sorry, at negative three quarters. Uh, you have, uh, in the long run, you know the graph is going to approach positive one here. So that's positive one there that you're approaching in the long run. I'm going to put a dotted line in there uh, to indicate kind of an asymptote there that we're approaching one in the long run. Uh, we had vertical asymptotes where the denominator was zero. So that happened at two and at negative two. So one, two, and minus one, minus two. Those were going to be vertical asymptotes. Again, dashed lines going up that way. I'm going to put a dashed line going up this direction as well for those asymptotes. And we have our y-intercepts. The two y-intercepts were at negative 3 and negative 1. So negative 1, I'm going to cross the x-axis. And at negative 3, I'm also going to cross the x-axis. And so with that information, I should be able to draw a pretty good graph of uh, what this thing looks like. Um, I've got a couple points to work with. I know that I'm crossing the x-axis at negative 3, and I'm approaching y equals 1 in the long run. So I'm going to start over here at y equals 1, and I want to draw a line that comes down and connects through, well, a curve that connects through 3, and then I'm going to have a vertical asymptote at negative 2, so my vertical asymptote is going to go off that direction. All right. Uh, I also know a little bit more about the behavior there. Um, because I have just an x minus 2 in the denominator, right near uh, negative 2, it's going to look like a 1 over x minus 2. That 1 over x minus 2 is going to do that, which is kind of a 1 over x. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be, uh, it's going to look right at, well, right at negative 2. Our graph is going to look kind of like, uh, something like a 1 over x plus 2, or maybe a negative 1 over x plus 2. I'm not quite sure which. But 1 over x plus 2, that's part of one of our, our fundamental graphs. It's the 1 the one over x graph, right? If we had like y equals 1 over x, we know that what that looks like. It's got this kind of those two branches, one going up, one going down. It's one of those toolkit graphs. It's one of our um, power functions there where we've got an odd power in there. Uh, and so I know that if I'm going down on the left side, I need to be going up to infinity on the right side, uh, in particular on either side of that. Uh, because it's to an odd power, it's an x plus 2 to the first power, I'm going to have that type of behavior. So I'm starting over here at negative 1 on the y-axis. Uh, I'm coming down here through negative 3 and heading off to negative infinity. And then I have to jump sides. I have to go up to up above. Here, the other side of that asymptote, because it's not, if it was to an even power, I'd stay down here at negative infinity. But because it's an odd power, I'm going to switch sides. I'm going to go up to positive infinity. I'm going to come down from positive infinity down uh, through my other x-intercept at uh, negative uh, 1, through the y-intercept at negative 3 quarters, and then off to negative infinity. Uh, on the y-axis there as I approach that vertical asymptote at x equals 2. Uh, and again, I at x equals 2, uh, I've got a factor over here of x minus 2 to the first power in my equation. So I'm going to behave like this 1 over x. So the 1 over x, if you're going down on one side, uh, you're going to head up to infinity on the other side. And so I'm going to head up to infinity and I have to approach 1 in the long run, so I'm going to approach 1 in the long run. So it's going to curve off something like that direction 
uh, there in the long run, approaching y equals 1 in the long run. Not allowed to cross this x-axis anywhere other than negative 1 and negative 3. Let me label that negative 1. Uh, and maybe I'll label this 2. This is a 2 right in here. Kind of hard to kind of hard to see a negative 2 in there. Uh, and so that's, a, that's actually what the graph of this thing is going to look like uh, based on that. So our short run behavior, uh, we get x-intercepts where the top of our fraction is equal to 0. We get vertical asymptotes where the bottom is equal to 0. Um, and there is one little, one little star on that. Uh, sometimes, occasionally, you'll have an equation where you'll have like a y equals I'm going to just write it in factored form. Uh, an x plus 3 and an x minus 2 on the top. And on the bottom, you'll have an x plus 1. And you'll have another x minus 2 on the bottom. Uh, what happens then on our graph is we're going to get a small hole uh, in the graph. Uh, at uh, x equals uh, 2. Uh, all the rest of the time, this x minus 2 over x minus 2, it's going to produce the exact same number. It's almost like a 1, but except for right at 2, at right at 2, I'm going to have a 0 divided by 0, and that's going to cause a problem. That's going to give us a little tiny hole, because we're not sure what to do with 0 divided by 0. 0 divided by 0 is uh, an undefined sort of quantity, uh, so we're going to leave that uh, a little tiny hole in there. So if I wanted to graph this y equals x plus 3 times x minus 2 uh, over x plus 1 over x minus 2, uh, I've got a vertical asymptote at uh, vertical asymptote at negative 1 because that's where my denominator is 0. I'm going to have a vertical asymptote. Uh, we're going to have an x-intercept at negative 3 because that's where the y-intercept is 0. Uh, and or, uh, what, well, that's, that's where the, not where the y-intercept, that's where the top is 0 at x equals negative 3. So that's an x-intercept. x-intercept at 3 because the top is 0. Something weird, we're going to have that small hole at x equals 2. Um, what's the y-intercept going to be? Well, if I plug in 0 for uh, x, I'm going to have I'm going to have a 0 plus 3 over 0 minus 2 divided by 0 plus 1 times uh, 0 minus 2. And I'll get uh, negative 6 on the top and negative 2 on the bottom. So I'll end up with positive 3. I'm going to cross the y-axis at 3. Uh, and then the long run behavior. I know that y is going to approach 1. In the long run, if you were to FOIL this out, I'm going to have an x squared on top and an x squared on the bottom. I'm going to have an x squared over x squared in the long run. And so that's going to approach y equals 1. So horizontal asymptote here at y equals 1. And let's see, uh, I'm approaching negative infinity there. Uh, I'm guessing because I'm not allowed uh, I can't cross the x-axis anywhere else I gotta start over here at y equals 1 I gotta hit that intercept so I'm gonna go down through that intercept get a vertical asymptote at that point um, again it's y plus 1 to the first power so I'm expecting kind of this opposite shape to it and uh, what's gonna happen at y equals 2 I need to add a little hole in my graph in there uh, because I'm going to get a little hole there. It's going to be undefined at that particular point. Uh, and that's, a, that's the thing that's for graphing calculators to really easily skip over that, that point. If you get lucky and the, the calculator evaluates right at 2, it will actually draw the hole, uh, but it's really difficult to get your calculator to actually do that. All right, so there's uh, some short run behavior and a couple of examples of graphing. Um, I think there's a little bit more to talk about with this one, uh, but we'll maybe add that in our next video.